two bills. Uh, Chair Lowen, are, you're, are you ready to proceed on these measures? Great, yes. thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, we're ready. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I would urge, uh, since there's uh, numerous people that would like to testify, I'd like to ask everyone to uh, summarize their testimony. A couple of minutes for each testifier would be a time limit that I'd like you to try to adhere to. And I'll ask you to wrap up if you go on. Uh, just in case uh, this does go on uh, too long, but this is a short hearing, so we don't have to worry about uh, anything except I would ask you uh, to keep yourself muted and your video off while you're waiting to testify uh, and then turn it off uh, again and mute yourself uh, once your testimony is complete. Uh, use the Zoom chat function if you need to communicate with tech uh, staff, uh, but only for the purpose. If you're disconnected, try to rejoin, you know, and if you're in the middle of testimony, I'll do my best to try to allow you to continue. Um, if we have, if there's a network failure or something, we may have to reschedule and we'll do proper notice to let you know what that would be and when it would be. Um, please uh, conduct yourself with uh, our finest tradition of Aloha and we'll be just fine in our hearing. Thank you so much for being here and testifying. First, let's talk about House Bill 1669 relating to sea level rise adaptation. Uh, we have uh, testimony, we've received testimony with written testimony with comments from Craig Uri at Department of Budget and Finance. And we have testimony uh, in support from DLNR OCCL. Uh, is Mr. Kane here? Yes, Mr. Michael Kane. The floor right, is yours. Good morning, Chair Committee members. Michael Kane, Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands. On behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, uh, we stand on our written testimony in support of this bill. Um, our one comment is that we like to see these plans have implementation strategies to make them more effective. Um, we have reviewed other comments that have been made in particular by um, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. And um, we would concur with their proposals as we figure it appears that that would also make this bill more effective. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Uh, Ms. Justine Nihipali, please proceed. Good morning, Chairs Tarnas and Lowen. It's nice to see you this morning, and Vice Chairs Bronco and Martin, and all members. Um, the Office of Planning uh, stands on its testimony with comments. Um, just a brief summary, uh, we just wanted to provide some recommendations uh, for flexibility of scope in general. Um, and part of the comments is that, you know, a lot of this scale of planning is typically done at the county level. And so, uh, you know, if moving this forward, we certainly would lean very heavily on the city and county of Honolulu for their perspective in terms of ensuring something and an outcome from this is implementable. Um, working with the different departments within that agency since there's so many infrastructure considerations. Um, we also recognize the significance of this asset of Waikiki for both the state and county level. Um, and we have some concerns relating to the capacity of our existing staff, provided that you know, the level of this <laughs> of Waikiki, um, we wouldn't have dedicated staff specifically uh, to manage this project and facilitate um, this collaboration that's needed um, for successful coordinated implementation, um, as well as um, we appreciate the overall concept. Um, again, full support in terms of the intention, um, but we're concerned about um, adversely affecting priorities in the executive budget. Thank you. Understood, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have testimony in support from the Board of Water Supply, Kathleen Mitchell. Please proceed. Yes, aloha. Good morning, Chair Tarnas and Chair Lowen. Uh, Kathy Mitchell, Board of Water Supply. We stand on, uh, on our testimony in support of HB 1669. And we note that we express our interest in participating in the working group. The BWS is uh, actively working with the city's climate change, sustainability and resilience 
office and um, with the city's one water panel to address the sea level rise adaptation from climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Dolan Eversall with University of Hawaii. Please proceed. Yes, aloha. Good morning, uh, Chairs Tarnas, Lowen, Vice Chairs uh, Bronco and Martin. Uh, my name is Dolan Eversall on behalf of Darren Lerner with the University of Hawaii. We will stand on our written um, supportive testimony with uh, maybe just a quick comment, uh, which is related to, with respect to this bill, I just wanted to highlight that there has been a number of other municipalities around the nation that have done similar resilience planning efforts. And the University of Hawaii is paying very close attention to those other municipalities and what those resilience plans look like as they might be applied here in Hawaii. Uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge we're not alone as a state in developing these plans. Uh, the other element I wanted to highlight with this bill, uh, we're very supportive of of is the pilot demonstration aspect. So while it could ultimately result in a resilience plan for Waikiki, perhaps more importantly, this could also serve as a demonstration to other coastal communities throughout the state. So uh, I'll stop there and happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have received written testimony and support from Dave Rainey with Sierra Club of Hawaii. Klaus Radke uh, with Coalition to Mitigate the Impacts of Sea Level Rise. Testimony with comments from the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association. And testimony in support uh, in writing from a number of individuals, Lois Crozier, Barbara Berry, Samuel Mitchell, Marshall Hung, Ken Hayashida, Denise Boisvert, Kim Jorgensen, Drew Wilkinson, and Arthur Ushijima. <clears throat> That's all the testimony we received on this measure. Members, do you have any questions? First, I'll ask Water Land. Uh, nope. Let me turn it over to you, Chair Lowen, if your committee members have questions. Uh, EAP members, any questions? No questions. Thanks, Chair Tarnas. Thank you very much. There being no qu further questions on this uh, measure, let's move on to the next measure. Thanks very much to the testifiers. Next bill is House Bill 1672 relating to special improvement districts. On this measure, we have a testimony in support from DLNR OCCL. Mr. Kane, please proceed. Uh, good morning. On behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, we support this bill and we do make one recommendation and that is that um, climate change and hazard mitigation be specifically mentioned as a um, component of these special improvement districts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony and support from University of Hawaii. Mr. Dolan Eversall, please proceed. Yes, aloha, good morning, Chair. Um, yeah, Dolan Eversall again from University of Hawaii. Uh, we'll stand on our written comments and support and just wanted to highlight one additional thing. In, in addition to DLNR's comments, I think an overarching comment about including climate change as a justification for special improvement districts. That seems um, like it would make sense, very logical. Uh, also just wanted to highlight that there are a number of coastal communities throughout the state, including here on the North shore of Oahu that might be very interested in development of such special improvement districts to help address uh, some of the recent and ongoing um, erosion and coastal hazard problems. So um, just want to highlight the utility of such uh, improvement districts. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony and support from the Waikiki Beach Special Improvement District Association, Mr. Rick Egged. Is Mr. Egged here? I see you, your name there. Mr. Can you Egged. hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Please proceed. Yes, the, we support this measure. Uh, we believe very strongly that <clears throat> uh, it's important to broaden the ability of the special improvement districts to aid our local communities. Uh, we think it will have a lot of relevance going forward. And um, we believe that this is a, it, the special improvement district has shown itself to be a valuable tool, uh, both in Hawaii and all across the US. And we believe that um, in our jurisdiction, we need to have this uh, broadening of the ability for special improvement districts to have that influence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have written testimony and support from Angela Huntmer with the Ko'olau Wailua Alliance. 
We have testimony and support from the Surfrider Foundation, Lauren Blickley. Is Lauren Blickley available? No? No? Uh, uh, members, please uh, refer to uh, her written testimony in support. Uh, next, we have uh, written testimony and support from Dave Rainey, Sierra Club of Hawaii, Lois Crozier, Barbara Berry, Samuel Mitchell, Elizabeth Benishek, Denise Boisvert, Kim Jorgensen, and Caitlin Jacobs. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, uh, do you have any questions? First to the Water and Land Committee, any questions? Yes, Representative Kobayashi. Um, for um, Rick Egan, um, I assume that you are in support of both this bill and the prior bill about a working group for um, Waikiki adaptation and resilience planning. Yes, yes, uh, Senator, that is, I mean, Representative, yes, that is correct. Um, in fact, I thought we had submitted testimony on the previous bill, but somehow must have slipped through the cracks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions from water and land members? If not, let me turn it over to you, Chair Lowen. Uh, thank you. Any questions from EEP members? All right, back to you, Chair Tarnas. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you to all the members for being here at this hour. And we'd like to move into decision-making directly, if that's okay with you, Chair Lowen. Yep. Thank you. So my recommendation for HB 1669 is to pass out a House Draft 1. I'd like to change the effective date to July 1, 2050. That's 2050. I'd like to incorporate the amendments from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development uh, blank out the appropriations, make some technical amendments, and include in the committee report what OPSD has identified as the cost and uh, positions needed to implement this. Um, that's my recommendation. Uh, members, any discussion, questions? Seeing none, uh, for the vote, Vice Chair, HB 1669 with amendments. The Please. recommendation. Proceed. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1669 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Ganadin. Aye. Representative Kobayashi. Aye. Representative Kong. With reservations. Thank you. Representative Morikawa. Aye. Representative Ono. Aye. And Representative McDermott is excused. The measure passes. Thank you. Over to you, Chair Lohan. Thank you. Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Same recommendation. Members, any comments? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Um, Chair recommends passing HB 1669 with amendments. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. I'm Representative Pasha. Aye. Representative Matayoshi. Aye. Representative Caruso. Aye. Representative Todd. Aye. Representative Tokioka. Oh, Representative Tokioka. I thought I saw him on the Zoom. Okay, I think he's still so far. So okay, um, I, I see him there. Representative Tokioka, we couldn't hear you, but I see you. Um, it's Representative Matsumoto. Hi. <laughs> All right, um, your recommendation is about the chair. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next measure, House Bill 1672. Uh, I would like to recommend passing out a House Draft 1. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, defect the effective date, July 1, 2050. And I would like to include uh, a, an amendment that was recommended to uh, put on um, page two line uh, between 19 and 20. So it would add a number five after natural hazard mitigation, which is new language. I wanna add number five, climate change and sea level rise adaptation. 
And then we would change what is currently number five to a number six. So that would be my recommendation. An HD1, add that language, and then defect the effective date. Members, any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote on HB 1672 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1672 with amendments, noting the excused absence of Representative McDermott. Is there any reservations? Uh, Representative Kong? Thank you. Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Over to you, Chair Lowen. Thank you, Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Same recommendation, members, any comments? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Chair recommends passing HB 1672 with amendments. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Uh, Representative Tokyoka. Aye. Seeing all members are here, um, are there any no's or reservations? Hearing then, um, Chair, your, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this uh, joint committee hearing of water, land, and environmental and, uh, and uh, uh, energy and environmental protection uh, is hereby adjourned. Uh, stand by. We'll come back again for our next joint committee hearing in moments. We're running a little behind schedule and have a long day. So if everyone can uh, please keep it brief or stand on your written testimony, which we do have and have read um, if possible. Uh, we will start with House Bill 1803. This is uh, the Green Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, we have first up the Attorney General with comments. Uh, DLNR. Thank you, uh, Suzanne Case, Chair, Department of Land and Natural Resources. Uh, DLNR respectfully stands on a written testimony in opposition for the reasons explained in our testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Good morning, Daniel. Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee. This is Daniel Basti, Sustainability Coordinator of the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. We stand on our testimony supporting the intent of this measure. We find that the intent of this measure aligns with the State Planning Act and the uh, very the many uh, priority guidelines set forth by the Planning Act. We defer to the Department of the Attorney General in terms of the specific language for the constitutional amendment. Thank you. Next, we have Conservation Council for Hawaii and support. Americans for Democratic Action in support. Life of the Land in support. Uh, Hawaii Interfaith Power and Light in support. Environmental Caucus of Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. We have a Hawaii Women's Caucus in support, 350 Hawaii in support, uh, Our Revolution Hawaii in support, uh, Ko'olau Wailua Alliance in support, Green Amendment for the Generations via Meyer Van Rossum in support, uh, Molly Atz in support, Hawaii Reef Hello. and Ocean Coalition. Thank you, Chair Lowen, Vice Chair. Uh, I Chair. On, I got, um, hold on, let me make sure. Hello. Am I on, Rep Lowen? Yep, go ahead. Thank you. And thank you, Chair Tarnas, Vice Chair uh, Branco, and members of the Water and Land Committee. Uh, this bill is the highest priority for the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition this year. I think it's undeniable that we have very fragile ecosystems in Hawaii. We have coral that are being killed by warming oceans. We have uh, water supplies that are being threatened with petroleum spills at Red Hill. Uh, we need to step up our environmental protection. The Green Amendment would provide a new and valuable tool with respect by amending to the Constitution's Bill of Rights. It would raise up people's rights to put them on a par with speech, assembly, and religion. The bill as filed would recognize and protect an inalienable right to clean water and air and health, healthy ecosystems, including climate. 
There are protections in the existing constitution, but those are only as defined by law. They are not a fundamental right. As a result, they often end up being an afterthought in decision making. We would ask the committee to amend the language uh, with, um, as appended to our testimony in an AC1. Thank you, Representative Amy Peruso, for your work on this. Uh, the bill would be amended to cover, quote, the fundamental right of the people, including future generations, to clean water and air, healthful environment and climate, healthy native ecosystems and beaches, shall be protected and shall not be infringed. The changes that are being made here are to add the word fundamental, uh, including future generation, to clean up the language around climate, uh, and to add in the preamble, rooted in the traditions and cultural and collective conscience of the state's people, including Native Hawaiians' traditional and ongoing special relationship to the environment and Aina. I think this is a very important bill. I hope the committees can pass it and I'm available for questions. Thank you for the opportunity so much to testify on this bill. Thank you. Next up, Hawaii Realtors with comments, Climate Protectors Hawaii in support, and then Retail Merchants of Hawaii in opposition. And then it looks like we have additional 23 uh, testimonies from individuals in support and one in opposition. Is there anyone else here who signed up to testify that I missed? Yes, hello. <clears throat> Sorry, Dave Mullenix with our Revolution Hawaii. Hey, please, in, uh, thank you, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, yes, we, we are in, stand in strong support. First, I want to thank um, all of you, the whole legislature, for passing the climate emergency last year. Um, that is a per perfect step forward that we needed to make. You know, you have to first declare that the building is on fire before you can start putting it out. This is the next step in that process. And I want to thank you all so much for considering this legislation. It's vital. Uh, we need... They've just, uh, a, few, a few days ago, the, the uh, ocean has uh, passed a tipping point. Uh, it will never get less warm than it is now. Uh, and that is just uh, one of the many feedback loops that are gonna be starting to happen if we don't start doing something immediately. And I wanna thank you all for considering this legislation. It's very important and have a very good day. Aloha. Thank you. And then um, Kelly King, go ahead. I see you on our list. Okay, thank you. Um, Chair Lowen, and I, I will, in the interest of time, stand on my testimony and support, you. but I also wanted to apologize to also Chair Tarnas and Vice Chair Bronco that my staff did not realize it was a joint meeting. So um, sorry we didn't get that, the Water and Land Committee on there, but um, you know, I appreciate all of you uh, jointly hearing this. It's, it's really important. Thank you, aloha. Thank you. Um, that is all the testimony that we have. Uh, members of EEP, are there any questions? Mr. Kawamoto is asking to oh, be recognized. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, John. Oh, thank you. Please. My name is John Kaw. We are in the schedule. Thanks. My name is John Kawamoto. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Hawaii's constitution designates the state government as the trustee of Hawaii's natural environment to benefit the people of Hawaii. State government also has the necessary authority to preserve the natural environment, but accountability is, is lacking. This bill creates the accountability necessary to ensure that the, national, that the natural environment is preserved. The Green, Amendment for, the Green Amendment may be new for Hawaii, but Pennsylvania has had it for more than 50 years. It works there, it can work here, mahalo. Thank you so much. Okay, I think that is um, everyone that we have. Members of EEP, any questions? All right, if not- I just had a question uh, for the Attorney, Attorney General, Attorney. but I, I'm not sure they're here. Uh, they weren't, they were not here. Okay. We did note their testimony though. No, um, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Rep. Matayoshi. Oh, no, I, I just wanted to hear from the Attorney General. Um, I think we called them and they weren't here. They did submit their yeah, testimony. I, I was called and I was uh, mistakenly on mute, but uh, we do um, uh, suggest that instead of adding a new section, we simply work with the uh, existing Article 11, Section 9, which already requires, which already states that each person has a right to a clean and healthful environment. Um, we, I, I know you're running out of time, so we do have our suggested 
um, amendment to Article 11, Section 9 in our testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, mm -hmm. members? All right, if not, over to you, Chair Tarnas. Members of uh, Water and Land Committee, any questions for our testifiers? Seeing none, I'll turn it back to you, Chair Lowen. Thank you. And we'll move on to the next bill on our agenda relating to renewable energy. This exempts um, roof mounted PV and solar hot water from review under chapter 6E. First up, we have uh, DLNR, Alan Downer. And again, if you, we do have your written testimony. If you can stand on your written testimony in the interest of time, we appreciate it. So go ahead, DLNR. Thank you. Uh, DLNR uh, stands on a written testimony offering comments. Thank you. Hawaii Historic, Historic Hawaii Foundation in opposition. Uh, Hawaii Solar Energy Association. Rocky, go ahead. Aloha, Chairs Lowen and Tarnas uh, and Vice Chairs Martin and Bronco. Um, I'm Rocky Mold. I'm with HSEA and we stand on our written testimony <clears throat> in support. Thank you. That is all the um, testifiers I have listed. Members, any questions? If not, over to you, Chair Tarnas. Water and land members, any questions for our testifiers? Nope, seeing none, back to you, Chair Lowen. Great, and we will also go straight into decision-making in the interest of time. So first up on House Bill 1803, we're gonna pass this uh, with amendments, adopting the amendments suggested in um, the High Rock testimony and also by a number of other environmental organizations and then technical amendments for clarity, consistency and style. We will defect the date to July 1st, 2100 to encourage further discussion. Members, any comments? Yes, I have, I have a comment. I, I just have, I have some concerns after reading the AG's testimony about the constitutionality of this bill and, and I'm, also, I'm always very hesitant to touch our constitution or to, to modify it if there's no real reason for it. So if this already does exist and we're not adopting the AG's uh, suggested changes, I'll be voting with reservations. Okay, thank you. Members, any other comments? Yeah, I, I have a comment. I have the same concern, Chair, but um, <clears throat> uh, I don't think the question was asked to you if you would accept what the Attorney General said in her testimony. We're making a number of other amendments that, so I don't know if the attorney general's amendments with the changes that we're making that were suggested in testimony, like still apply in the same way. So at this time, no, but I'm, we'll, we can make a note that there were concerns in the committee report. I so, echo the same concerns. Only okay. voting with reservations. Thank you. Great, thank you. And I, and, and Chair, I also understand that this is going to <clears throat> judiciary and most of us are on that, so we can address that there too. Great, thank you. All right, great, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Um, voting on HB 1803, um, Chair recommends uh, passing with amendments. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Representative Hashim. Aye. Representative Matioshi. Reservations. Ma uh, Representative Peruso. Aye. Representative Todd. Excused. Um, Representative Tokioka. Reservations. Representative Matsumoto. Reservations. Chair, your um, recommendation is adopted. <clears throat> Thank you, and for two, Chair Tarnas. Thank you. Uh, Water and Land Committee, uh, same recommendation, House Bill 1803 with amendments. Any discussion, questions? Seeing um, none, Vice Chair. Oh yes, go ahead, Rep Kobayashi. I think I'm a WR on this. Understood. Thank you very much. Any other discussion, comments, Waterland members? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote on HB 1803 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1803 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Gannadin. Aye. Noting uh, aye with reservation for Representative Kobayashi. Representative Kong. With reservations. Thank you. Representative Morikawa. Reservations. Okay. Representative Ono. Aye. And Representative McDermott is excused. The measure passes. Thank you. Back to you, Chair Lowen. Thank you. Um, and on to House Bill 1523, 
Uh, we do want to continue to move this forward. Um, so we're going to um, defect the date to July 1st, 2100. Um, and that is all. Members, any comments? Yes, I, I have a comment, Chair. Go ahead. Uh, I, I do have concerns about this. Um, I, I mean, if, if we're giving tax credits or tax breaks for historic structures, but we are allowing them to modify them in, in fairly massive ways, uh, Shifty's testimony, I thought, was uh, persuasive to me in that, you know, we're, we're adding large structures to the top of these buildings. Um, kind of not, kind of flies in the face of historic preservation. Now, if, if they want to give up their historic uh, tax credits then, and, and make the modifications, I think that's fair. But I'm not sure they should be able to have two bites of the apple as it is or, or kind of double dip on this. So I'll be voting with reservations. Um not sure what you mean by double dipping, but um, there's there's not, to my understanding, any. If, if they're able to, to double maintain dip on their any tax credits, um, if they're able to continue to maintain their historic nature, um, get the tax credits from that, but also make the modifications. Maybe, maybe double dipping was the wrong analogy. My, my apologies, Chair. I think it is. All right. Thank you, members. Any other comments? If not, uh, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Um, so, Chair recommends passing HB 1523 with amendments. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Rep Hashem? Aye. Rep Matsuyoshi? Reservations. Rep Peruso? Aye. Rep Todd? Aye. Rep Tokyoka? Excuse Reservation, me. sorry. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, Representative Matsumoto? Aye. Chair, your um, recommendation is adopted. Right, okay. uh, Water and Land yeah. Committee, uh, same recommendation, HB 1523 with amendments. Any discussion, questions? Seeing none, uh, Vice Chair for the vote, HB 1523 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill 1523 with amendments, noting the excused absence of Representative McDermott. Is there any reservations? Representative with reservations. Paul? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you very much, members. Back to you, Chair Lowen, to close out the hearing. All right, thank you very much. We will adjourn this uh, joint committee, and I think we're on a different Zoom link for EEP, so EEP members come join us on the other link. We're adjourned. <laughs>
And then when you're finished with testimony, please, again, mute yourself and turn your video off. I'd appreciate it. If you have any technical issue, just use the chat function to communicate with our IT staff. Uh, if you're disconnected, join up again. I'll try to do my best to accommodate you to testify if you're in the middle of a testimonial. And in case uh, the network uh, drops and we have to reschedule, we'll put out proper notice uh, so that everyone will know when we're meeting again. Uh, and if everyone would please uh, use uh, their, their best behavior uh, and in our hearing, uh, we'll do just fine. I appreciate everyone's alo aloha. Okay, let's move on members to consider the uh, House Bill 2135. Uh, relating to historic preservation reviews. Uh, first, we have testimony and support from DLNR. Dr. Downer, please proceed. Aloha, Chair Tarnas, Vice Chair Bronco, uh, members of the committee. I'm Alan Downer. I'm the administrator of the State Historic Preservation Division. Um, the department stands on its written testimony. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony and support from the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Good morning, Chair Tarnas, Vice Chair Bronco, and other members of the committee. We stand uh, in strong support of this bill and want to thank um, Historic Preservation for working with us. Uh, their, their suggestions um, are certainly acceptable by the department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We've received written testimony in opposition from Historic Hawaii Foundation and from the Society for Hawaiian Archaeology, and then written testimony in support from Dara Carlin. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, any questions for our testifiers today? Nope, seeing none, thank you very much to our testifiers. We'll move on to the next measure. House Bill 2162, relating to transferability of mooring permits. First up, we have Testimony and support from the Department of Land and Natural Resources Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. Mr. Ed Underwood, please proceed. Good morning, Chair Tarnas and Vice Chair Bronco and committee members. Ed Underwood, Administrator with the Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. The department stands in strong support of this measure and we're here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have testimony and support from Jeffrey Husselman. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, any questions for our testifier from Dobor? Representative Kobayashi. Um, for Dylan R. Um, doesn't this um, bill then um, increase the value of all boats that currently have permits? And I'm wondering how then do you accommodate people who don't have a um, slip permit, but want to get one? Uh, in that case, representative, they would go on the wait list. We do maintain a wait list for uh, first come first serve, or people will also have the opportunity to sell their boats and then keep the mooring permit. Um, and that's always been an issue because if people want to get out of boating um, for some reason and they sell their boat, well, they have, the new owner has nowhere to put it. So it creates this catch-22, and this is to correct that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Members, any other questions? Thanks very much to our testifier. Let's move on to the next measure. House Bill 1719 relating to the Alawai Boat Harbor. First up, we have testimony from DLNR Dobor. Mr. Underwood, please proceed. Good morning again. Uh, we, the department appreciates the intent of this measure and we do recommend amendments and we're here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have received written testimony and support from Jeffrey Hustleman. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, any questions for our testifier? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thanks very much. Next on our hearing notice agenda, HB 2163, relating to a state voting facility lease program. Uh, 
First up, we have testimony from D, uh, DLNR Dobor. Mr. Underwood, please proceed. Good morning again. Uh, we stand, the department stands in strong support of this measure and we do recommend an amendment. And we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony in opposition from HGEA. Chad Nagai, yes, please proceed. Good morning. Um, my name is Chad Nai with HGA, um, and we stand on our written testimony opposing um, the purpose and intent of the HB 2163, um, as this potentially displaces members of our bargaining unit that cur currently operate these facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nye. And members, we have one more testimony, uh, written testimony in support from Jeffrey Hustleman. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, any questions for our testifiers? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thanks very much to our testifiers. Next, we have House Bill 2164 relating to disposition of water licenses by the Board of Land and Natural Resources. First up, we have testimony from DLNR. Mr. Ian Hirokawa, please proceed. <clears throat> Good morning, Chair Tarnas, uh, Vice Chair Bronco. Uh, Ian Hirokawa with DLNR Land Division uh, testifying in um, standing, and we'll stand on our testimony in uh, support of this administrative measure and be available for any questions. And thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony with comments from the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Mr. Isla. Uh, good, morning, Chair. Aloha. good morning, Chair Tarnas, Vice Chair Bronco. We stand on our uh, testimony with comments on this bill. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have testimony, written testimony in opposition from Melody Aduha, Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Testimony also in opposition from Sierra Club. Is Sierra Club on? Yes, Mr. Tanaka, please proceed. Hey, uh, good afternoon, um, Chair, members of the committee, Wayne Tanaka with the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Uh, Sierra Club stands in uh, strong opposition to this measure. Um, you have a written testimony. I'll just uh, say that we really think there needs to be more time, more discussion with um, uh, important stakeholders and, and folks with rights to water resources that may be impacted by direct negotiations. So, um, you know, we urge uh, you to hold this measure and maybe set up a task force um, to convene these stakeholders so we can have real conversations about what kinds of safeguards are needed before we grant the DLNR this kind of authority. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony and support from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, next, we have testimony uh, in opposition from Earth Justice. Is a representative of Earth Justice here to provide testimony? Yes, good morning, Chair Tarnas, members of the committee. Can you hear me? Please proceed, yes. Thank you. We stand um, on our testimony in opposition to this measure um, for many of the reasons already stated by Sierra Club. The program has been plagued by um, controversy for many years. There's been, um, there's several pending lawsuits about the board's failure to uphold its public trust duties um, in the execution of both the leasing and the licensing program. And there really hasn't been the type of um, comprehensive look at this regulatory program, which is, I believe the members know, is a very um, outdated program that was first um, written and formed back in the plantation era. And we have come a long way since then. Our environmental conditions have changed. Um, our regulatory landscape with the creation of the Water Commission and the 1978 Constitution, um, making water a public trust resource has changed it. And it really needs um, a, a much more comprehensive look at this um, at this program rather than this um, rather piecemeal piece of legislation that is just addressing a small component of it. So I would urge the committee to please hold the bill and to consider the creation of a task force to look at um, the program again more comprehensively. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we've received written testimony in opposition from the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. Uh, written testimony with comments from the Waioli Valley Taro Hui. <laughs> And we have testimony and support from the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative. Ms. Tokioka, please proceed. 
Yes, good morning, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, and committee members. KUC stands on its testimony in support of the measure. Uh, we, uh, are, we are currently, uh, or will be seeking licenses for two hydroelectric facilities. Uh, we appreciate that this bill would allow for long-term water licenses, and that will be especially critical if we are to successfully develop the West Kauai Energy Project. And just to expand on that point uh, very briefly, first of all, the project is extremely expensive. It's a $200 million project uh, that involves the rehabilitation of state resources, state, uh, state uh, irrigation infrastructure, res three reservoirs, uh, and it must be paid that paid for by the ratepayers of KIUC. So in order to do that, we need uh, a long time frame for that to be feasible for our ratepayers to bear that burden. Also, um, the Commission on Water Resources Management has already established an interim in-stream flow standard that would govern the use of water for this project that was accomplished through a mediation agreement that was signed in 2017 and included a number of parties, including KIUC, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, ADC, and um, several community members represented by Earth Justice. So the IIFS is already established uh, and um, Environmental study, uh, environmental process is is ongoing right now. We are uh, pursuing Chapter 343 compliance. We've uh, already published a draft environmental assessment and are in the process of um, uh, drafting the final EA for consideration. So we are offering two amendments to the bill, um, and that those would create timeframes so that uh, for action at various points in the process, and so that um, the the process would continue in a timely manner, and the license applications could be adjudicated in a timely manner. And I'll be happy to answer any questions for committee members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Members, we have received written testimony in opposition from numerous uh, individuals, uh, Ann Frederick with the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, and then Jennifer Valentine, Amy Harlib, Rick Masterson, Dylan Ramos, Patricia Blair, Dennis Boisvert, Kim Jorgensen, William Liggett, Ann Massey, Ramona Hussey, Cheryl Hendrickson, Linda Lyerly, Arnold Kotler, Tia Pearson, Shannon Rudolph, Shea Hodges, Emma Stierhoff, Sherry Pollock, Jason Alexander, Ashley Lee, Laura Ramirez, Greg Pupione, Sheila Dean, Robin Price, and Alexandra Skees, all in opposition. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, any questions for our testifiers? Vice Chair Bronco, please proceed. This is for Ian Hirokawa. Yes, sir. Hi. Hey. Ian, could you please explain to me about when a water licensing is required? Because I understand that sometimes you folks issue it and sometimes you don't. Yes, when um, what the approach we've taken is that when the user of the water is diverting it from uh, what we would call a source located on state land. So let's say if the diversion point is on a stream that's on state lands or or the, you know, the water source or a well that is located on state lands, that's when we require a water lease. If, for example, if you own the, if you happen to own the land that the stream is on going all the way up to the source, you know, we recognize that you do have a, a pertinent rights to, to use that water for your reasonable and beneficial use. So in those cases, we don't require a lease, um, you know, with, in general, I would say this uh, in a, as a general approach, that's the, the approach we take to when a lease is required. But it's just a general approach. It's nothing um, guidelines that are actually in statute to determine when it's required and when it's not. Well, I think what we do is we just recognize case law and also the water code does um, recognize a pertinent uh, rights. So again, we don't require it in every single circumstance of water use. That's noting though that, um, excuse sorry, one just one point of clarification is noting though that um, even if you were to let, let's say divert off of, one second, sorry. Sorry. Um, it, noting though that even if you're diverting off your own, like a, a stream on your own property, you're still subject to 
sea worm regulations such as a stream diversion permit and the IFS and, and so on. You still are still subject to those regulatory requirements. Then a follow-up question. In this proposal, there could be the possibility up to 55 years for this for leases. How do you factor in the possibility of climate change, um, streams drying up or changes in climate? How do we factor into that if we're giving away such a long lease? You know, I that that's a big issue that we've considered extensively internally and you know, whether a lease is, you know, uh, appropriate for that long of a term. And on one hand, you know, we certainly understand the, the uncertainty posed by climate change, but also, you know, uh, specific, uh, talking specifically about the West Kauai Energy Project, the need for a longer term lease to qualify to finance a renewable energy project to address climate change. So I think my answer to that would be there's still other regulatory safeguards such as, you know, uh, the IFS, you know, being updated by, yeah. you know, on sea worm to that would restrict the amount of water that can be taken to the stream. So it would be important to keep those updated as, as conditions change. And also uh, another avenue is drafting the, the terms of the lease itself. So what we've been doing is including, you know, with uh, the leases we're looking at developing now, uh, the ability to the state to withdraw water in such instances where, for example, you know, to meet the needs of a, a revised IFS, we would simply restrict the amount of water that the, the licensee would be able to use. Thank you. Chair, if I may, another question? From, Certainly. Please proceed. Okay, from Mr. Isla, please. Yes. Hi, Mr. Isla. I was hoping that you could just kind of expand on the unique position that DHHL has towards, you know, revenues from these leases. Um, I was reading in your testimony that these sugar lands were not given to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands because of the need for economic uh, industry at the time. But you folks do have a unique relationship to these revenues. If you could expand upon that, please. Uh, from the very beginning of the program, um, the, our NERF program has been funded basically out of both the 30% um, share of sugar leases as well as water licenses. Uh, the uh, lack of water license uh, issuance and the uh, lack of um, sort of a agreed upon appraisal process for water licenses has led to a decline in the uh, uh, revenue that's uh, going to the um, NERF fund right now. Um, we provided in our testimony an example of uh, maybe a shared um, uh, a shared revenue response that we worked out with Hawaiian Electric uh, on Hawaii Island with regards to a hydro project. Uh, you can see the difference there would be um, anywhere from five thousand dollars a month. Um, as proposed originally to uh, $79,000 per month um, fee if the revenues were actually shared for um, uh, water for hydro. Uh, that's a clear example of um, why the department is requesting that uh, this bill be amended in such a way that um, there's an alternative uh, way of looking at the, the value of water, especially when it's non-consumptive uses, um, because we feel that uh, the, the revenue um, that's generated, for example, from, from hydro and other non-consumptive uses um, is, uh, can, can, be, can be borne by the, either the shareholder or the final customer as, as well as fulfill its fiduciary duty to Native Hawaiians as defined in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Thank you, Mr. Ila. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, member, members, any other questions? Representative Kobayashi, please proceed. Um, I'm wondering for Dilanar. Um, it seems that um, opposition to the bill in part involves um, what I think is lack of discussion amongst the stakeholders. Did you, uh, how, how did you vet this bill? In both, um, well, we've had discussions, I think, extensively with 
DHHL on on the measure, not just this year, but in previous years too, we've discussed the, you know, how the, basically the main issue of how we value water. You know, we've discussed it with them extensively. I've also spoken with OHA um, last year when, when we had the same bill and we had a meeting with some with stakeholders this year. I mean, I think, for example, some of the changes that we we propose from the major for this year's major came about of discussions. For example, I, it, we added the um, public notice, the additional public notice section, because based on discussions with OHA, you know, they raised that concern and, you know, we were agreed to that. Now, it's not exactly the same language they proposed in their testimony last year, but, you know, we, I think we agreed that, yeah, having additional transparency and public notice that um, the opportunity for the public to comment is, is valuable. So, you know, we have, I mean, I, we have taken their concerns to into account. I mean, certainly if more discussion, you know, is needed, we're always willing to discuss, but I, I just, I mean, speaking, I, I don't know if, I mean, speaking honestly, I'm not sure where we're gonna reach much agreement on a lot of these issues. We may just have to agree to disagree, just like, for example, with DHHL on, I think the valuation approach um, you know, I think it got to the point where we just need to agree to disagree. And ultimately, that's part of, I think, the legislative process, you know, because ultimately, you're, you know, the, the bill will be uh, acted upon by the, if at all, acted upon by the legislature. So I think we've tried our best to reach out and discuss. I mean, we're certainly willing to always be in that position. Um, if I may add, uh, uh, Representative uh, Russell Tsuji for DLNR. One more thing that we, we did present this matter in an open meeting before the land board and had a pretty lengthy discussion that day. Uh, Mr. Eiland, his, his uh, DHHL staff was present uh, among others, among and other environmental mm -hmm. groups. And so it was thoroughly discussed. It, I, I think it took probably all day that day. Mm, thank okay, you. thank you. Um, one other question for Dale and R. Um, the word disposition and dispose um, seems to be all encompassing. That is, um, it could mean that this would give greater authority to DLNR to give or grant a license, to deny a license, to amend a license, to uh, extend a license. Um, has that issue ever been brought up? That is the very, very broad nature of the term disposition or dispose. I, I think that's consistent with what the, the board's already existing authority is under statute, not just for water, but lands in general. Um, with the exception of, I think, the direct negotiation um, language, the statute doesn't really give, I don't believe, give the board much any more authority than what they had previously. You know, the 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 55 year term is already in statute. Um, you know, all the other things arguably either give clarity or impose more requirements to the water, lease, such as consultation with the water commission. You know, that wasn't there before the public notice that wasn't there before. The, the, really, the only additional authority is the, the direct negotiation. I'm wondering if um, deal on, um, HHL agrees that this really is not an expansion of authority to um, DLNR, but simply a clarification. I would characterize it more of a, um, and I think the other, the other testimony points out it's sort of a. Um, um, a lack of uh, the Department of Land and Natural Resources exercising its fiduciary duty when it comes to water and the value of water and the use of water uh, to all the beneficiaries of the state, but in particular to um, the subclass of uh, Native Hawaiians as defined by the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Thank you. Members, other questions for our testifiers? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on. Thanks very much to our testifiers on this measure.
House Bill 2166, relating to the payment of debt service on the Turtle Bay reimbursable general obligation bonds. We have testimony and support from DLNR. Morning, Chair, Vice Chair, committee members, and everyone else who's participating in this meeting. I'm David Penn, this program specialist in Division of Forestry and Wildlife for the Legacy Land Conservation Program. The department uh, strongly supports this measure, stands on its written testimony, and I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Members, that's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Any questions for Mr. Penn? Seeing none, we will move on. Thanks very much, Mr. Penn. Next, House Bill 2167, 2167, relating to historic preservation reviews. First up, we have testimony and support from Dr. Downer with DLNR, State Historic Preservation Division. Please proceed, Dr. Downer. Uh, Chair, committee members, I'm Alan Downer. I'm the administrator of the State Historic Preservation Division. Um, the department stands on its written testimony and support, and I'm available to answer questions. Thank you. Next, we have written testimony with comments from the Department of Planning and Permitting, City and County of Honolulu. Testimony in opposition from the planning departments in the County of Maui, County of Hawaii, and County of Kauai, and City and County of Honolulu. In opposition. Uh, testimony, written testimony in support from Maui County Council Chair Alice Lee. Testimony with comments from Historic Hawaii Foundation. And finally, testimony and support from NAIOP, Mr. Evan Hoy. Evan, please proceed. Good morning, Chair um, Tarnes, Vice Chair Bronco, members of the committee. My name is Evan Hoy, and I'm testifying on behalf of NAIOP Hawaii. Um, NAIOP stands in support of HB 2167 with comments. Um, we appreciate the legislature's commitment to addressing the current volume of historic reviews. Uh, that are delaying permits throughout the state and much needed housing, economic development, and critical infrastructure projects. Uh, we greatly support the intent of this measure to identify a solution. Um, NIAB does recommend adopting the preferred language in HB 821, which establishes a program for third-party individuals and organizations to conduct document reviews on proposed projects. Um, this will assist DLNR and the counties by significantly reducing the current historic review caseload. Um, Again, thank you so much for the opportunity to testify on this measure. Uh, we look forward to working with all parties. Mahalo for the opportunity. Uh, we'll be available for any questions. Thank you very much. Members, that's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Do you have any questions for our testifiers? Seeing none, we will move on. Thank you very much to our testifiers. Next bill is House Bill 2181 relating to stormwater fees. First up, we have testimony in opposition from Maui, Maui County Council Chair Alice Lee. Testimony also in writing. Testimony in writing in opposition from the County of Maui Department of Public Works. Testimony in opposition in writing from Council Member Radiant Cordero, Honolulu City Council. Written testimony in opposition from Hawaii Community Foundation. Testimony in opposition from One World, One Water, Kristen Reynolds. Is Kristen Reynolds, yes, please proceed. Good morning, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I stand on the written testimony. My name is Kristen Reynolds with One World, One Water. I'm an engineer and policy analyst. Um, the stormwater infrastructure has been designed for our past rainfall, and we all know that our climate has changed. So. We expect our municipality to manage it, the quality and the quantity of the stormwater, and they have to adapt and innovate in order to do this. It's a hard task they have in front of them. But they're um, nationally recognized leaders. The Department of Facilities Maintenance won an award for their management and innovation. So I just strongly urge us to oppose this bill to support the stormwater um, Department of Facilities Maintenance taking on the stormwater utility in an equitable way. We all benefit from the stormwater infrastructure and it's critical that we choose our future today um, by these decisions. So um, by everyone paying in, we're, we're putting our money where we value. So appreciate the, the time this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, next, we have testimony with comments from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Mr. Tom Yamachika. Oh, Jade McMillan, please proceed. Hi. Yes, good morning. Uh, Jade McMillan, on behalf of Tom Yamachika and Tax Foundation of Hawaii, we have uh, submitted comments on the measure and we'll um, send on our written comments. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony in opposition from NIA, Mr. Evan Oi. Please proceed. Uh, Evan Oi again on behalf of NIAP Hawaii. We stand on our written testimony in opposition to this measure and will be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have received written testimony in opposition from the following individuals Lauren Roth Venue, uh, Yvonne Chan, Matthew Weyer, Johnny May Perry, and Doug Harper, all in opposition. Members, that's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Any questions for our testifiers? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you very much to our testifiers. Next, we have HB 1654, relating to the Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. On this measure, we have testimony and support from DLNR. Mr. Ed Underwood, please proceed. Good morning again, Chair. The department stands in strong support of this measure, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we've received written testimony with comments from the League of Women Voters of Hawaii. That's all the testimony we've received on this measure. Members, any question for Mr. Underwood? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thanks very much, Mr. Underwood. Next measure, House Bill 2446, relating to the Department of Land and Natural Resources. First up, we have testimony and support from DLNR. Mr. Kurt Cottrell, please proceed. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, DLNR stands on its written testimony in very strong support of this measure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Members, we have testimony, written testimony with comments from the Department of Budget and Finance and written testimony and support from the Hawaii Tourism Authority. That's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Members, any questions for Mr. Cottrell? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thanks very much, Mr. Cottrell. Mahalo. Next is House Bill 1436, relating to development rights. First up, we have testimony and support from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Ms. Ruby Edwards, please proceed. Good morning, chairs and members of the committee. Um, Ruby Edwards, a planner with the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. OPSD stands on its written support in um, support of this measure with the note that we're recommending amendment to uh, the statutes, findings and purpose section to incorporate um, and reflect the, the new use. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have received written testimony and support from Maui County Council Chair Alice Lee. Members, that's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Any questions for our testifier, Ms. Edwards from OPSD? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you very much, Ms. Edwards. Next is House Bill 1671 relating to land study bureau classifications and ratings. First up, we have testimony and support from the State Land Use Commission. Mr. Daniel Orendenker, please proceed. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Daniel Orendenker, Executive Officer of State Land Use Commission. Uh, thank you, Chair and Vice Chair and members of the committee. Um, <clears throat> we will stand on our written testimony and support. <clears throat> Excuse me, we think this measure will help alleviate some of the current, con current concerns, at least on a temporary basis uh, with regard to land use, um, stu land study bureau classifications and ratings. Thank you, Mr. Chair, I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have testimony with comments from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Mr. Rodney Funakoshi, please proceed. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair and members. Rodney Funakoshi from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Uh, OPSD offers comments and stands on our written testimony, uh, preferring and recommending instead HB 1668, which proposes a more comprehensive study. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have 
Testimony with comments from the Department of Agriculture. Mr. Earl Yamamoto, please proceed. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Earl Yamamoto from Department of Agriculture. Uh, we stand on our written testimony with uh, comments, concerns, and recommendations. Thank you. I'll be here for any questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have written testimony with comments from the Office of Information Practices. Written testimony with comments from the League of Women Voters of Hawaii. Testimony with comments from Hawaii Farm Bureau. And finally, testimony and support from Hunter Hevelin. Is Hunter Hevelin on this? Yes, please proceed, sir. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Hunter Hevelin, I'm a land use and agricultural systems planner. And testifying in support of this effort, as well as uh, the OPSD focused bill, but asking that either vessel um, moving forward consider also multifunctional land use and be looking into or at least reviewing uh, opportunities to have a, a more multifaceted uh, assessment system for our, our working landscapes, as written in my testimony. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, that's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Any questions for our testifiers? Seeing none, we will move on. Thank you to our testifiers. Next, we have House Bill 1552, relating to the Stadium Development District. First up, we have testimony and support from the Stadium Authority. Good morning, uh, Chair. Ryan, Ryan Andrews, please proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Chair and Vice Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Ryan Andrews. I'm the Acting Manager of Aloha Stadium. Uh, the authority stands on our written testimony in support of this measure, and we appreciate the clarification that this measure brings to the composition of the Stadium Authority Board. I will stand by for questions. Mahalo for the opportunity to provide testimony. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Next, we have testimony in support from University of Hawaii. Mr. Calvert Young, are you available? Apparently not. Members, I would uh, refer you to the written testimony from the University of Hawaii on this measure. Members, that's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Do you have any questions for our testifier, Mr. Andrews from the Stadium Authority? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. Okay, next, House Bill 2034, relating to the Hawaii Community Development Authority, HCDA. Uh, first up, we have testimony from HCDA, and we have Craig Nakamoto here. Please proceed. Good morning, Chair Tarnas, Vice Chair Bronco, and members of the committee. Uh, in my name is Craig Nakamoto, and I'm speaking on behalf of Deepak Nipane and Hawaii Community Development Authority. In the interest of time, we stand on our written testimony providing comments. Uh, this bill uh, will propose us to change the nominating authority uh, for the community members. If this bill is, um, if the committee's intent is to move this bill forward, uh, we just suggest language uh, that would Make the uh, make it consistent with the three bills that are currently in the legislature: Senate Bill two three nine eight, Senate Bill three two two four, and House Bill eighteen twenty seven. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and provide comments. Thank you very much. Uh, next, members, we have testimony in writing in opposition from Gerard Silva. That's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Members, any questions for Mr. Nakamoto of HCDA? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nakamoto. Next members, we have House Bill 2194 relating to golf courses and driving ranges. First up, we have testimony in opposition from the Attorney General. Uh, have, good morning. Yes, please proceed, Ms. Inagaki. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Karen Inagaki, Deputy Attorney General. Uh, the department does oppose this motion for the reasons set forth in our testimony. Um, our, one of our main concerns is that it does um, seem to violate the constitution of the Hawaii, um, 
of, of Hawaii uh, because it, it embraces two subjects in the, in the, in the title. And then also um, for the reasons set forth in our testimony, we believe that it is overly broad, it's unnecessary, and it runs counter to several of uh, tort principles. Um, thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next, we have testimony in opposition from Jerry Pupilo, Director, Department of Enterprise Services, City and County of Honolulu. Thank you, Chair Thomas, Vice Chair yes. Bronco, and members of the committee. Um, yeah, we, we stand on our written testimony. The Enterprise Services um, opposes the bill and respectfully requests its deferral. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have written testimony and support from Jasmine Porter. That's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Members, any questions for our testifiers? I have a question. You represent Kobayashi. Um, for AG, um, historically, I believe that um, the person, the, the golfer who hit the ball um, bears some to great liability. Does this now remove any uh, danger of liability to the golfer? Um, you mean that the, the act, the person that hit the ball would no longer be liable. I believe right. that that's what this bill would do, that it places all the uh, liability on the golf course operator and uh, driving range uh, operators. So the, the golfer who hit the ball, how would you say, badly, is mm -hmm. now no longer liable. Um, that's what the bill would, would have the effect of doing, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Any other questions, members? Seeing none, uh, we will move on. Thank you very much. Next, House Bill 2196, relating to stream maintenance. First up, we have testimony with comments from DLNR. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair and Committee Members, Kaleo Manu, Deputy with the Water Commission. Uh, the department stands on its written testimony offering comments on the measure and are here to answer any questions. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have written testimony with comments from the Department of Budget and Finance. Written testimony with comments from County of Maui, Department of Public Works. And written testimony and support from two individuals, Bob Grossman and Nancy Davlentes. Members, that's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Any questions for our testifier, Mr. Kaleo Manuel? Seeing none, we'll move on. Thanks very much, Mr. Manuel. Now, finally, we're on the last bill on our agenda, House Bill 2413, relating to state parks. First up, we have testimony in opposition from DLNR, Mr. Kurt Cottrell, please proceed. Good morning again, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, uh, Kurt Cottrell, Administrator, Division of State Parks. And yeah, we stand on our written testimony uh, asking for deferral of this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have written testimony and support from Mahialani Cipher with Ko'olau Foundation. Written testimony and support from Nancy Davlentes, Ko'olau Poco Hawaiian Civic Club, and testimony in opposition from Gerard Silva. That's all the testimony we have received on this measure. Members, any questions for Mr. Cottrell? Seeing none, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Cottrell. Mahalo. Members, uh, that's all of the uh, measures that uh, we have on our agenda today. Uh, with your agreement, I'd like to move uh, straight into decision-making. Uh, we will proceed with decision making now. So, if members would go back up to the top of the agenda, House Bill 2135. My recommendation, members, is to pass out an HD1, defect the effective date, July 1, 2050, 2050. And I would like to incorporate the amendments as suggested by DLNR. <clears throat> That's my recommendation. Members, any discussion, questions? 
Seeing none, vice chair for the vote, HB 2135 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 2135 with amendments. Chair and vice chair vote aye. Representative Ganadin. Aye. Representative Kobayashi. I see your hand. Thank you, sir. Representative Kong. Aye. Representative Morikawa. Aye. Representative Ono. Excused. Representative McDermott is excused. The measure passes. Thank you, members. Next, House Bill 2162 relating to transferability of mooring permits. My suggestion is to pass out a House Draft 1 uh, merely by defecting the effective date to July 1, 2050. That's my recommendation. Members, any discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, HB 2162 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill 2162 with amendments, noting the excused absence of Representative Ono and Representative McDermott, and also for all future measures. Is there any reservations? Sorry, Rep. Ono, uh, aye. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Rep. Ono. Um, any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you very much. Next. House Bill 1719, relating to the Alawai Boat Harbor. My recommendation is to pass out a House Draft 1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050. And I would like to actually incorporate Dobor's amendment uh, that they offered in their testimony, uh, which I think should address the issue uh, more directly as opposed to how the bill is currently crafted. So that's my recommendation. Members, any discussion? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote, HB 1719 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1719 with amendments, noting the excused absence of Representative McDermott. Is there any reservations? Reservations. Representative Gannadin. Noting the testimony of the No other reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you very much. Next, House Bill 2163, relating to a state boating facility lease program. My recommendation is to pass out an HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050, make some technical amendments. And I would also like to adopt the amendment as offered by DLNR. Members, any discussion? Chair. Yes, please, I Representative just... Morikawa. Thank you, Chair. I have some concerns about the personnel issues. Um, if it displaces regular civil service employees, I have some major issues with that. So I'll be voting with reservations. Understood. And, and I share your concerns with that uh, and would urge Dobor to address that issue as they move forward by using those employees in other voting facilities. Thank you, Chair. Other comments, discussion? Uh, I made a mistake. I didn't, I didn't turn the page. So uh, my reservation is noting Mr. Nye is for a 2163, this bill, not the previous. I guess we could re-vote that earlier one if you really want to make the change. But let's 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 finish this one first and then you can tell me what you want to do. Okay. Continuing on HB 2163, Representative Ganadan, comments on this bill. Um, uh, with reservation. Uh, the same reservation that, uh, that Okay, understood. Other comments on HB 2163 and my recommendation, Representative Kobayashi? Uh, with reservations. Understood. Other discussion, members? Thank you. Uh, there being no further discussion, let's take a vote on this. HB 2163 with amendments. Vice Chair. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill 2163 with amendments, noting the excused absence of Representative McDermott and noting the reservations of Representative Ganadin, Kobayashi, and Morikawa. Is there any further reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Um, Representative Ganadin, did you want to go back or is it okay to leave it as is? Leave it out of okay, thank you. Just, just for the public to know it, but I think I'm safe. Okay, 
Thank you. We'll move on. House Bill 2164, <laughs> relating to disposition of water licenses by the Board of Land and Natural Resources. I must admit that I was hoping for uh, more uh, consensus and agreement amongst all the stakeholders, which did not materialize in this bill. Uh, I would urge the DLNR to engage more fully with the stakeholders to come back with a bill that was really representing a position that would address these longstanding issues that stakeholders have. I recognize KIUC that they have uh, things they'd like to achieve and you accommodated that. But everybody else, nobody seemed to feel that their views were addressed. So my recommendation is to defer this measure. Regrettably, because we need to deal with it, but this is not ready. And I would urge DLNR to go back and engage in meaningful discussion with the stakeholders. If necessary, I could propose a, a House resolution, House concurrent resolution to urge you to do that. But uh, I can just tell you now, you can do it on your own. You don't need us to tell you that. This is just such a longstanding issue. Okay, enough of a lecture. My recommendation is to defer. Uh, discussion, members? No, okay, moving on. House Bill 2166, relating to the payment of debt service on the Turtle Bay reimbursable general obligation bonds. My recommendation members is to pass out of House Draft 1, defecting the effective date to July 1, 2050. Discussion. Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, HB 2166 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill Number 2166 with amendment, noting the excused absence of Representative McDermott for this measure and all forward moving measures. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Next, House Bill 2167, relating to historic preservation reviews, noting the concern uh, uh, that uh, has been brought up by the counties. Uh, I still think this is an important issue to move forward with this. Uh, so uh, my recommendation is to move out on HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050, make some technical amendments. I'd like to include DLNR's amendments that's in their testimony, blank out the appropriations uh, uh, in the uh, bill itself. Uh, and then in the committee report, urge uh, DLNR to work with the counties to figure out a path forward that will work for everybody. That's my recommendation. Discussion. Seeing none, uh, Vice Chair for the vote, HB 2167 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 2167 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you very much. Next, House Bill 2181 relating to stormwater fees. I must admit, I was surprised that even DLNR or anyone in the government failed to submit testimony in support of this. It's the governor's package. And so my recommendation is to defer. Clearly there needs to be a better uh, uh, preparation from uh, the administration on this matter and better communication with the counties. Uh, so I urge the administration to go back to the drawing board work on this again and come back next year. So I'm deferring HB 2181. Discussion? Members? No. Nope. Okay, we'll move on. House Bill 1654 relating to the Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. On this measure, members, I'd like to move on in HD1, defect the effective date to July 1, 2050. Discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote for HB 1654 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1654 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you very much. Next, House Bill 2446 relating to the Department of Land and Natural Resources. This is a very important bill. And I'd like to move it forward uh, with an HD1 merely by defecting the effective date to July 1, 2050 and leave all the numbers in there so that uh, since this is Chair Luke's bill, she will have all those numbers in the bill itself when it's uh, considered in finance. So that's my recommendation. 
merely defecting the effective date and moving it on as an HD1. Discussion, members? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote, HB 2446 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 2446 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Next, HB 1436 relating to development rights. I'd like to pass that on HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050. And I'd like to incorporate the amendments as suggested by Office of Planning and Sustainable Development in their testimony. Members, discussion? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote, HB 1436 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1436 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Next, HB 1671, relating to land study bureau classifications and ratings. On this one, uh, while we are also advancing HB 1668 to make systemic changes to address this uh, situation, I'd like to move this measure forward as well. Uh, so I'm proposing to pass out an HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050, make some technical amendments, and I'd like to incorporate the amendments as suggested by the Office of Information Practices uh, in their testimony. <clears throat> That's my recommendation. Members, any discussion? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote on HB 1671 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1671 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Next, House Bill 1552 relating to the Stadium Development District. My recommendation is to pass out HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050, and that's it. Uh, discussion, members. Seeing none, vice chair for the vote, 1552 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 1552 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Next, House Bill 2034, relating to the Hawaii Community Development Authority. My recommendation is to pass out an HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050, make, make a few technical amendments, and I'd like to incorporate the amendments as recommended by HCDA. Members, discussion? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote, HB 2034 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 2034 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Next bill, House Bill 2194. While I appreciate uh, the introducer's concern about this uh, and her feelings that golf courses need to do a better job working with their neighboring property owners to address this problem, I do not think this bill is going to help. So my recommendation is to defer this measure. Discussion, members. Rep. Ganadin. Chair, I think it's fairly- Move it up close to your mouth, please. Always. Uh, Chair, I think it's fairly um, obvious from the testimony of the Office of the Attorney General and tort principles that residences uh, can just sue um, under in, in, a, in circuit court um, if, they, if they desire. Um, they can even- Based on the testimony, join in a class action lawsuit if they if they if they want to proceed that way. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Any other discussion on my recommendation to defer HB two one nine four? Seeing none, we'll move on. House Bill two one nine six. While I recognize uh, that uh, this is related to stream maintenance, while I recognize that there are some streams that are under the county's responsibility. Uh, the introducer of this feels that uh, there are streams that are on state lands that the state should pay attention to. She uh, would like to continue this discussion. My recommendation is to move out an HD1, change the effective date to July 1, 2050, blank appropriations for continued discussion. Members, any comments, any discussion on this? Chair. Yes, Representative okay. Morikawa. 
Thank you for that recommendation because this is actually statewide. You have um, little streams, ditches that run um, supposedly on state land, but near pri uh, properties. So I think this is a good discussion to, to continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other discussion members? If not, Vice Chair for the vote, HB 2196 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill 2196 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Noting the reservations of Representative Kong. Are there any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you. Final measure on our agenda, House Bill 2413 relating to state parks. Uh, in discussions, and, and I want to acknowledge all the great work of state parks, the testimony laid it out, you've done great work and you should continue doing that work. Uh, the introducer really feels that this would still be helpful. Uh, she wanted to add hiking trails to the list, but because of the title relating to state parks, I'm hesitant to add hiking trails because hiking trails are outside of state parks in many cases. So. Out of deference to uh, our requirement to keep on one subject in the bill, uh, I would just uh, tell DLNR that the introducer really wants to look at hiking trails as another um, a possible source of revenues that they should consider. So uh, to continue discussion on this, I propose to move out on HD1, making some technical amendments and changing the effective date to July 1, 2050. Discussion, members. Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, HB 2413 with amendments. The recommendation of the chair is to pass House Bill number 2413 with amendments. Is there any reservations? Noting the reservations of Representative Kong. Any no votes? The measure passes. Thank you very much. There being no further business before this committee, we are adjourned.